proceeding to order, and we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. May I please have a motion to approve the agenda? I move we approve the agenda as presented. Thank you, Birgit. Is there support? Support. Thank you. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor, <laughs> please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the agenda passes. Um, that's going to bring us to public participation, which we have none this evening. Um, and with that, um, I will turn it right over to Sean. Thank you again. <laughs> Welcome again. Um, and we'll get right into our superintendent search discussion. So it's good to be back with you. Just on behalf of myself and MASB, let me offer my condolences to you as a board and the Lake Orion community on the passing of Stephen Dracos. Uh, he was an amazing person. Um, I have a son who's an attorney in Oakland County. I knew of him. I knew just of his commitment to this community and it, the long-time service to this community. So I want to acknowledge that loss that you've all experienced. Thank you. Thank you. And the work goes on. <laughs> um, we've got three things to do tonight. I've got a brief presentation on just this phase of the search process. Won't be long, but just to kind of, we're entering a whole new phase. And I want to make sure as we enter this phase that we have an overview of what's to come, not only tonight, but when we do first round interviews, then second round interviews. So I'm gonna do that. Then we're gonna look at the potential first round interview questions. And then we're gonna find out who we want to invite to that first round set of interviews. So let me begin just talking about the interview preparation. Um, again, purpose of the interview is to learn more about the candidates and how they conduct themselves in a public setting. Um, you will see that some candidates are more practiced and rehearsed in interviews than others. Um, you want to try and listen for the content. However, public speaking and being in an interview-like setting is part of the superintendent's job. So how they perform is important. Beyond the first interview, um, we will have a careful review of the previous experience, thorough reference and fact-checking, second interviews, other research. <laughs> I'd just like to put the interview in the context that it's one piece of the overall process. In terms of preparing, um, after we identify questions for, the, and we'll do that tonight, MASB prepares an interview guide for each board member. We will assign the questions you select to different board members to ask. You conduct the interview. You as a board ask the questions. I'm in the back of the room when it comes to this space. Those are basically randomly assigned based upon the questions you give us. Um, there's a guide that basically encourages you to listen, to make notes, to rate the answers as they're given, and to then a place on the guide to say, you know, what would the follow-up be to this question? So there would be a guide that you do. It's basically one question per page. Uh, allows a format for you to take notes. And you'll get copies of that electronically in advance of the interviews. We'll have hard copies for you the night of the interview. So you'll have some interview guide. Um, give some thought about what you want to hear in terms of response to the questions. And mm -hmm. no one practice the question you'll be asking. Uh, figure out which question is being asked before you so that the interview can flow well. Um, we also like to warn board members about what we call cultural noise. Just overly positive or general responses, which are the socially acceptable thing to say. Um, responses that lack substance and evidence. And we encourage a redirection to the facts and experiences. That's nice, but can you tell us where you've done that in your past experience? Um, encourage the board to be attentive. Uh, during interviews, you know, nod, pause, just, you know, be natural, make sure you're engaged. Um, listening responses during interviews should not be overly supportive. Um, I once had a board member after a certain candidate's response was like, that's what I was looking for, he's my guy. <laughs> 
Needless to say, that disrupted the flow of the rest of the evening, not to mention the overall interview process. Um, you want to be engaged. You want to make sure you're interacting. But there is a part of this process that involves that poker face uh, and making sure that you're giving that feedback, but not in a way that would suggest to anybody watching that there's decisions being made without hearing about everybody. Um, encourage people to go into the interview with an open mind. Listen objectively. Um, don't, don't rush to break a silence. Um, frankly, some of the best candidates will pause after the question's been asked to gather their thoughts. Um, allow them silence. Don't be afraid of it. Um, and again, try not to overly validate any one candidate's responses. Um, again, more fundamentals. Make notes. The notes you take as a part of this process are subject to FOIA. That's just a heads up. Um, don't make any notes that you wouldn't want to have printed in the local paper because the notes you take during the interview process are subject to FOIA. Um, listen for facts and actual events. We encourage people to think about the STAR protocol. You'll see that many of the questions that we're suggesting be asked are questions that ask for evidence and experience. Um, it's easy for candidates to talk abstractly. If you've read the right books, you can give the right answers. You want to hear them describe a situation, how they've responded, the actions they took, and the results that were achieved. Um, after the interview, we're going to take a second to note questions you have for future interviews. A um, little bit of logistics. In the first round of interviews, our goal is to create like circumstances. We try and set up an apples-to-apples -apples situation. Um, so we'll identify 14 to 16 questions that will be the questions we ask all the candidates we bring in for first round interviews. After each interview, we'll ask the audience for feedback. Um, I'm going to be working with Julie because it's, we need a couple of support people for interviews. Um, just give you the heads up. Um, we'll need somebody to act as a greeter as candidates come in and hold them in the green room, which I assume will be the conference room behind us. Um, we'll need somebody who, I will collect feedback forms from the audience in between interviews. I will hand those to somebody and I'll ask them to make seven copies because my mm -hmm. understanding is we'll have, be back to a full board for the mm -hmm. interviews. I'll ask them to make seven copies. And before you debrief the interview, we will give you copies of the audience feedback. So you have a chance to look at what the audience heard as well as to process what you heard. Then we'll ask you to debrief the interview. Um, we'll go through each candidate that you interview in the first round and I'll have two questions for you. What did you like? What did you hear that excites you about this candidate? What did you hear that was positive? The second question I ask is, what are your wonderings? What, what questions do you have about their candidacy <clears throat> now that you've heard them? I scribble furiously. <laughs> I'll do that for all the candidates we bring in for the first round interview. After we finish interviewing all the first round candidates, and we'll, we'll have that conversation about all of them. Once we've had that conversation about all of the first round interviews, then we'll talk about what do we want to do next. Did you hear some candidates you think would be uh, worthy of inviting back for a second round? If so, who are those candidates you want to see, hear from again? And we'll try and get, I, I will push you to bring back no more than two finalists for the second round. Um, sometimes boards are very reluctant to cut anybody. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, I will try and push you to winnow it down to two candidates for the second round. What I will do for the second round is in terms of developing questions with you, you will have, um, when we go through questions in a minute, you're going to say, oh, I want to make sure we ask that one, but could we ask it in the second round? Typically, I come out of this process of question identification for the first round with a handful that the board has said, let's not use that for the first round, let's save it for the second round. So we'll have those, and those will be common to both candidates we bring back. 
But when we did that debriefing of all the first round candidates and I asked you what your wonderings were, I will have been scribbling like mad and I will generate candidate specific questions based upon your feedback from the first round interview. So when we come to the second round, some of the questions will be the same for both candidates, but some of them will be, well, we heard this in the first round, could you elaborate? Or, you know, how do you address this situation given the background that you've had that isn't exactly like the job you'll be doing or that we'd be hiring you to do if you're our superintendent? So that's the difference between the first and the second rounds. The other thing that's going to be different in the second round is um, in the first round, I'm going to ask you to stay to the script, ask the questions. Don't ask for a lot of clarification. Just let them answer the questions. In the second round, I'm going to encourage you to pause and see if you have a follow-up or any of your fellow board members have a follow-up after each question. When we get through with all of our planned questions in the second round, I'll look at the board and say, board members, do you have any additional questions? I will also have passed out little quarter page sheets to the audience and see if they have any questions that have not been asked. When I do that, I always let the audience know that um, we may not get to their questions based upon time. And I also let them know that I will screen their questions um, just to make sure they're appropriate questions. Sometimes an audience member is coming late and the candidate's already been asked the question and answered it. So I'll do that screening of questions um, just to make sure we stay on the right side of legal mm -hmm. in terms of what we're asking. So that's kind of the difference between the first and second round. I do in both rounds tell candidates, you know, their board will be asking you 15 questions. Uh, you, there's 50 minutes allotted for the interview. That's approximately three minutes per response. Make sure you're monitoring your time. Um, and I will encourage the person who has like question seven and question 12 just to say this is question 12 so the person has that uh, signal in terms of where we are in the process. So, but you know, again, Part of the reason is people who are going to be a superintendent should be cognizant of how they manage time and how they're able to respond succinctly but thoroughly. Um, and basically, I will bring the candidate into the room, and that's the board president's job to manage the proceedings. It's familiar. You did this four years ago, but it's a little different because I know you used MLI. I've got a good friend, a couple good friends who work for MLI. We compare notes a lot. Um, it's the same, but not identical. So any, any questions about the process and what we're preparing for? It's also yeah. in person this time, which is oh, a big yes, difference. Oh, yes, that's for, a little. Which is a big oh, difference Oh, Heather, us. Zoom. Yes, yeah, Heather. as opposed to all on Zoom. Whew. Thank you. Um, so just for clarification, um, we won't ask follow-up questions during the first round. Correct. So when it's happening, it's very clean cut. Everyone gets the same. Got it. And then, so yeah, Danielle's facilitating all of that, those pieces as they're happening. You're just there kind of in the background. I, I have a flag in my back pocket in case I need to pull it out. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> Let me develop the second round question. So when will we develop the second round tonight? Some With whatever's of, left over? or Some of the questions will be your leftovers. Okay. And, and I don't want to say leftover. Some of them you look at and you say, if we answer this, ask this one from this category in round one, this would be a good one to, and I make note of that. And so, we would discuss that like while we're doing, like after the discussion of the first interviews? Yeah, well, and... Because we won't meet again. When we debrief each candidate, one of the questions I'll ask you is, you've just heard from... Okay. You've just During heard from Mr. Smith... Uh, what did you like about Mr. Smith? What are your wonderings? What would you want to ask? And we'll do that for all the first round candidates. And then I'll have those notes for the candidates we decide to bring back. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, is that all in open, uh, debriefing? The debriefing is all in open because any deliberation has to be done because you are deliberating as a board at that point. And that's a requirement that it be done in open session. I facilitate in a way that encourages you to 
talk about the positives of candidates. <laughs> um, and, and the questioning, there's a way to ask questions. Um, uh, you have candidates with enough positives so that we can stack up positives and make that the differentiator um, in, a, in a way that's appropriate and, and typically goes well in a public deliberation. Um, so this is just putting this out there. So if I recall correctly, we're going to be doing like the second round of interviews over two evenings, correct? Is that kind of the... We, we've got two evenings set up. Okay. Um, typically, I've done the final interviews back-to-back -back just to give people that back-to-back -back feel. Um, and how a final round typically works is candidates come into the district in the afternoon. Uh, I would look for a couple of board members to volunteer um, usually it's two pairs of board members to take candidates on a tour, oftentimes with an administrator just to go along. It's a little different in the summer. Um, you know, touring schools is like uh, going to the boatyard in the winter or the marina in the winter. I mean, it's, it's true. Um, but, you know, it's still a chance to get an idea of the breadth of the district, the facilities, also a chance just to be driving around and seeing the community. Because, um, you know, sometimes people have an idea of a community and you get out driving a little bit and it looks different. So it's a chance to kind of have that education. I also tell board members, too, when you're coming to a second interview, sometimes it's not just about the candidate selling themselves to the board. Sometimes there's a job for the board to sell themselves to the <laughs> candidate um, to make sure they're going to say yes, should, should they be selected. So that usually happens for a couple hours in the afternoon. What we also do is decide where to put each of the two candidates, and we have a community open house, and we invite the community to come and meet the candidates. Um, engage in, we usually set it up for an hour of conversation. Again, it's a little different because it's the summer. We'll probably, we'll probably do that in this building and just use this room and the nice conference room. We usually do it side by side for the convenience of community members so that they can, you know, one stop shop and talk to one candidate, talk to the other. Um, we invite people to fill out feedback forms when they're done with that. Um, encourage board members, if they want to observe that, to do so, but to hang in the back because you had a chance to interact. But it's a good opportunity to see, it, it's a different setting, you know. Mm -hmm. Doing this is one type of interaction. Standing and interacting with a parent, a grandparent, a business owner one-on-one -on -one is a different interaction. So it's an opportunity to see how they do in that type of setting. So what I, typically what I recommend is community tours from 2 to 4, open houses from you know, somewhere in that 4 to 6 window, First interview, 6 to 7.30. Second interview, 7.30 till 9. And mm -hmm. 9 o'clock. I, I encourage decision-making on the day of the second interview. Um, it's about perception and open meetings. Um, mm -hmm. I, when boards suddenly take a long adjournment after the second interview and a half hour later come back and decide it's not a good look. Um, I've seen that happen. Or when you do the second round interview and come back three days later to decide, it just leaves open the possibility of people getting the impression that you've decided outside of an open meeting. So I encourage boards, meet candidates for that second round and, and make a decision. Um, more specifically for the f first round of interviews that are going to be coming up here in July-ish, if those are going to occur over a couple of days, um, actually this is a conversation Julie and I had about potentially not having it broadcast on, on TV, because if someone's interviewing, two people are interviewing Wednesday and two people are interviewing Thursday, if those Thursday candidates would actually, you know, once again, we would hope, right, they would be honest, but it would actually give them an advantage. So have, you know, as in your experience, you know, obviously we do have quite a lot of technological capabilities here, but just to keep the playing field level, 
you know, uh, but then eventually broadcast, like putting them on our website or whatever, we, you know, uh, I, after I, the interviews. So the community can be involved and see those, but it's just to level the playing field a little bit. I've had boards tape the first round because they're over two days, not do them live broadcast. Correct. And then put them up so they can't, by then you've windowed it down to two and people can be efficient and watch the first round interviews for the year two finalists. Correct. That's, so, that's what I recommend. Okay. Um, I, mm -hmm. I've been in situations where they've said, no, we want to do it all live. My experience has been candidates that, um, candidates that watch and then prepare usually do not do well interviewing mm -hmm. because they've over-prepared and their, their answers are flat and not at all dynamic. So, um, and you, you, I mean, yeah. last we're, time we're you were laughing because we're, we, we experienced that last time. It was over Zoom. Over Zoom. Being broadcast. It was but, totally evident that she had watched. Of, yeah. But mm -hmm. one of the candidates, and we're, we should avoid gender specific pronouns tonight as to not give away identities, but mm -hmm. one of the candidates <laughs> last time we believed. Well, that was yeah. four years and, ago. Yeah. Well, and I, I've, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it's kind tonight. of a. Yeah. Uh, That's true. I think it's the fairest way to do it is what we're suggesting is we record them and but then, then broadcast broad after. After, just into, like I said, I mean, just level the playing field so there yep. can be no question of. Because um, technically they could come. Yeah, well, I mean, exactly. If you yeah. if you wanted to sit in the crowd on the, uh, if you're a second, I mean, uh, granted, that's probably going to hurt your chances of being becoming a finalist. Uh, <laughs> but the other side, I liked what your point was. It makes it efficient for the community too. That say. Mm -hmm. If they want to come here and see them all live, it's open, it's transparent. But if they want to f start forming their opinion between the two finalists, because the other side in representative government, we do get to choose who the finalists are. Mm -hmm. Correct. They, they can well, have then. You know, and, and in the in the press release we'll craft announcing the finalists, it's easy to say, you know, all interviews from the first round can be viewed at. Correct. And, yes. you know, our two finalists are and this is how you watch their interviews specifically. Got it. Okay. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on and, that and piece of it. Of and that. typically between first and second round, um, I, we do a little scrubbing of personal information from resumes and letters of application, but then we will post those to your website as well. So uh, the community can see here's the resume mm -hmm. and letter submitted along with our two finalist applications. Excellent. Um, okay. Anything else on that topic? Well, these, these are great questions. I want to make sure you're comfortable with the process and right. kind of understand where we will roll. Mm -hmm. Are we good with it? I, looks like it. Okay. Then I'm going to turn this off for a minute, mm -hmm. and we're going to move to kind of the bank of questions. And I gave you that question bank. And I tried to go through and suggest numbers of questions per category. Um, it's not perfect. Um, you had more instructional question. You, you, your profile is weighted a little more heavily towards instructional leadership, but there are some general leadership questions that I think get at more of what the instructional leadership qualities were that I was hearing um, in the focus groups. So we'll, we'll just go through. Um, they won't necessarily appear in this order. I think it's bad form if the first question you ask a candidate is about board relations. <laughs> um, that just happens to be the first category on this form. Um, we'll put them in an order that makes sense. Typically, we start with a, a community engagement question or an instructional question. Um, so don't don't worry that the first category is yeah, like I said that is that is bad form. If the first thing you ask is how are you going to get along with us? <laughs> so board relations of those three options, is there one that you think would be a pr preferred question to ask? And just as a reminder, obviously we're only using numbers, yep. right? We right. don't want to read out questions or anything at the <laughs> right. So um, I know it's tempting to do so. <laughs> Do 
one is just all yellow just, numbers. Just so I who feels the strongest I, offer an I opinion. I think three is number three. The I agree. strongest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's use that as a round one interview question. Um, is there one in that category you'd want for round two? Is it possible, actually, I think if, if we're missing something, that we could create some additional questions? Because I mm -hmm. think there's a maybe an um, example-based question that might fit better in there. Mm -hmm. and, and what I do, too, is um, anything like that that you want to email me, okay. then, mm -hmm. then I've got it. So we don't have to do it in a way that... Correct. I don't <laughs> want to do it live right now, right. but I think I could email you a couple examples of... Mm -hmm. I do like question one because it just, it, it, that, the way we go about having that relationship that's covered in question one is very, is it, is there, how dynamic are they or how fixed are they? I mean, I think number two is out altogether. For yeah, me. I didn't like that, quite, I was not a fan of question two either. No, so, yeah. so, I agree though. I also. Yeah. Of, I, the, of the three here, one yeah. and three were the yeah. Yes. Okay. Consensus. There so, we go. So we'll make sure we use, I heard three for the first round mm -hmm. and one for the second round, but also look for, if there are things you, that aren't on the list that you think should be added, we can tweak them. Very good. So the next category is finance and facilities. I suggested three, just knowing that you're in the midst of a bond, you've got facilities, you've got questions about that. Um, are there questions on that that you particularly like? There's nine, they go over to the next page. I like three. I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I do I, like eight as I well. I like eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jake and I are aligned on this one, too. Mm -hmm. Eight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So three and eight are probably my top two as well. Mm -hmm. So three and eight, definitely. Um, and, and five never never goes away. Yes. It's always something yes. that five is critical. It's out there. But I, and five is one that I always tell boards, you've got to ask that either in the first or second. Mm -hmm. I think Correct. in this community, you need to ask it in the first round. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm and, with you. And I was almost thinking we could combine eight and nine a little, too. Make it a two-part question a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nine is, for that role, I in a, in a district our size, that's not something that they're necessarily intimately involved in. If they, if they go too deep into that, that becomes a, hey, True. we're, a, we're, we're yeah. a 7,000 student, 800 employee district, and you're, you're in you're, the weeds. And you got yeah. Andrea to yeah. figure yeah. a lot that's of that out. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So those three for the first round, anything in that section that you think, make sure we get this in the second round? I don't think we're, are we differentiating right now, first and second round? We're just telling you out of the group our favorites. Okay. I mean, and we, we kind of did for the first one because for board relations, we did say, um, yeah. you know, question three, we would like to see in the first round, but question one could be a second round question. Uh, two is a difficult question. And I mean, we haven't experienced that as much lately, but that's something that in this line of work, mm -hmm. It's True. always around the corner that that's something they might be facing in the role. And in the second round, we can ask more than one question out of each area. Oh, yeah. So, oh. because I do think five's got to be. Yeah, we the, said five, five would be a first, be first, first round, round interview question. Three, five, eight, first round. Yeah. But we're only in first round going to ask one. No, because in the, uh, when it says finances and facilities next to it, it says three questions. That's kind of just based on. Um, the community feedback and whatnot, the stakeholder input, what the community, you know, kind of drove that. So we can ask multiple questions, right, from each. Um, yeah. You know, right. right. And, but I'm just looking at the total number of questions out of all of those categories. We're not going to be able to do first round interviews in 20 minutes. Oh, no, well, we're no, not. That oh, was no, never. That was board, for, that's board members. That's board members. This is an hour this, process. They get, they, get, they, get, they get fifty minutes. Yeah. yeah. And then we, we have, have ten minute debrief. Going on. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Correct. That's a lot 
So no. <laughs> Seven questions. Yeah, board members will ask six questions probably. Yeah. And then they have 20 minutes. Yeah. We're interviewing. We're doing multiple okay. interviews. Yeah, we're, we're having this multiple. This interview process, I anticipate 14 to 16 questions to be answered in a 15-minute block of time. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. You know, I would suggest you look at one or two because those are the questions dealing with finances, and you've picked three that really, three is a, a community and partnership, but you don't have a budget process, budget development question identified. So yeah, I look we at talked one. about that's, two. That's where two. I said two, right. two. Two is a tough question to ask in the second round. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like that because it, it, it required, you know, you did the role. That, that's, that's a... Tough question. How you how you handle difficult circumstances is is a key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So answer ask question two. Save that for the second round. Two and two. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because at that point, mm -hmm. that's when you're digging in deeper with the person. Okay. So in that category, I've got three, five, and eight for first round. Two. Number two for the second round. Any others in that category you'd want in second round? Again, we'll have other questions for the second round that are candidate specific. Right. And I, I think that's exactly, is if we had these questions available, that after you hear from a person in the first round, one of these might jump off the page sure. and say, I Excellent. really want to ask candidate, Excellent. the fourth candidate, mm -hmm. that question. question. Yeah. Yeah. So communications and community relations, um, I've got eight there. Again, it's a high priority. But I, I put some of that in the leadership questions at the end. Um. I liked question two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I liked two as well. Four and eight. <laughs> two, four, and eight you liked? What about three? I know, I like those two. I liked okay. six. <laughs> so we just like all the no, questions. I, I, but, I just, just I, but what I will say is I liked two. I, yeah. mm -hmm. Two jumped out. I liked two as well. Two, two jumped out at me. Two, I agree. I, I'm, I'm definitely doing two for the first round then. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And then you said four and eight as well? But then where do we go from? Four and six? I think six is a good challenger because it's going to make them not feel comfortable. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That, that was my question. Whenever you're talking about a yeah. challenging situation, it's just, yeah. 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 Scott, don't give a giveaway. Okay, is there consensus oh. to ask six? I mean, I, I, I agree with six, so. Six in round one. Yeah. 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 Six and two? Throw a bit of a, like throw a difficult, two. throw a difficult one in round one, see how they, mm -hmm. see yeah. how they deal with it. Mm -hmm. see if you can. So I've got two and six for round one. Any of those you want to make sure don't get left behind and just say right now, let's make sure we ask this in round two. I, I, I did like four as well, to your point. I don't want to give too much, but that, that covers, a, covers another segment. De demographic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure we do number four in round two. Yeah. It's a bit of a curveball because yeah. you don't <laughs> think of that yeah. when you're. And, and, you know, frankly, eight came out of uh, some work I've done in districts where they've had very challenging Title IX issues that mm -hmm. have dragged on and been very controversial. Mm -hmm. um, and they were looking to see if somebody was suited to address those moving forward. I think we, we, th we a couple of us threw out eight as well. Okay, and, so. and that's, a, that's a tougher one for the second round. Mm -hmm. So let's, I've got two and six for the first round, four and eight as possible for the second round. Sure. sure. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Then instructional leader, again, this, there's more of these that hit in the general leadership at the end, but there's 10 questions um, just suggested. So in this next category, including the one on the next page, are there ones that grab you? Ten is interesting just in the time we're in. I think that was the intent of that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I would expand it a little. I really like five because when you're moving up in the organization, mm -hmm. yep, yeah, I you, agree. You have to do things differently when you have the big chair. Yeah, yeah, I agree on five as well. I'll just point to seven or an eight and say one of those, you need to make sure you ask one of those questions because that is. Uh, that, mo that hit that, me because that was in our candidate profile as right. well about, about. I like eight. I would choose eight as well yeah. of those two. I would mm -hmm. choose eight as well. Okay. Yeah, I like eight. Again, I, I just. Yeah, thank you a, for the guidance because you're right. If you don't ask certain things. Why do we put it in our profile? Exactly. <laughs> or you, 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 you've, mi you've missed something that's always there yeah. well and and there's also a constituent group for whom that is the question that must mm -hmm. be asked certainly and you don't want to not ask it yes so i got five eight and ten others mm -hmm. there that um what about nine nine yeah i saw that one as well i I think that's a good one for the second I round. I think so as like, well. Like that's a that's a yeah. good. I like nine as well. Yeah. Before we hire you, hit, hit them with that one. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it really asks them to get into details. Detail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got five, eight, and ten. Nine is a potential second round. Again, anything else you want to make sure that doesn't get left behind. Going, going. <laughs> Which brings is, us to, to, oh. I think we do a good job with six, so I'm not sure. But I know. But we want to continue to do. Yeah, I saw, I like six. Six jumped out at me a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. Six and nine will give you similar responses. Yes. Right. Good point. Yeah. Um, just Of the two, I would choose nine then, yes. right? Yes. So. Nine asks for a little more precision right. in terms of... No, I, yeah, that's a great point. They are very similar. It's probably why it stuck out, because <laughs> they were so similar. No good point. So, so human resources, again, there's five. It, it goes over to page five. There's 11 possible questions. Okay. Um, in smaller districts where there is no human resource manager, mm -hmm. um, this tends to be more important. Or in districts where there seems to be significant morale issues mm -hmm. um, this is more important that's why I, I didn't you know suggest as many in this category mm -hmm. for this one I like five personally it's probably seven is it okay as far as yeah like true I actually of the two I would you know I would choose seven because it's a little bit more specific. Yes, yeah, a little bit more detail would be involved in answering that. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But that that vein, I like that whole vein going in that direction. I like the specifics of two or ten. It's it, they're similar questions. Yes. But I want to know, do they have experience in that area? Mm -hmm. Because that is that is a major. You know, and I, I yeah. think 11 is playing on to 10 as well. It's almost like I think that's what they mean. Yeah, that, the only I thing I worry is about that is you could, it could be not applied, to, 10. Not applied to the topic matter of 2 or 10. Right. Yeah. I'm wondering if we could add a portion of 11 to 10. Um, it would be the fourth word of 11. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I, I like the, uh, the 10, only thing is uh, you get, we're getting a little more too specific there because in the first round, I, just oh. to say in oh, the yeah. first round, you might have someone who's like, oh, well, I really, you know, that's the advanced. I've question. never done that. I was the thinking for the second. The round, basic sorry. in the first round, I would want to know, do they have any exposure to that? Because. Before I go to the, if you, I don't want to find out in the second round that nobody has any exposure to two or ten. Right. So I was thinking. Sorry, I was talking about second round. Okay. More yeah. detailed. Yeah. So, so I would modify ten for the second round and. But I, but I really want to get one of those out in the first round. Yes. So and it might not be. We could go back. What we could do is table eleven and say maybe right. we come back to that type of question because the way they answer this one 
would likely lead you to ask 11 in the second round. Okay, so you gave me an overview. Yep. Now tell me some specifics. Some yeah. specifics when it when it got to a certain situation. Yeah, I just think that fourth word is really key for that topic. For the second round, I would think, yes. but for the first round, I would just want a generic overview of where they're at. So two would be great for round one. Or we could use ten and then just re yeah, work cause, cause, eleven to be a little bit more detailed about the subject matter of ten. But I'm with you. The two jumped out at me for a first round that says just lay it out yeah. there yeah. at the highest Straight level forward. and say, mm -hmm. okay. tell me, tell me what, tell me where you're at. So well, use two, two and seven for, for the first round. Correct. <laughs> so far. And then maybe a hybrid of ten and eleven. Ten, for the eleven, second. hybrid, something yeah. depending upon. Depending on how, but that's where you're going to say, what do you want to hear depending more about? Your and interviews. that question. Mm -hmm is a big one that could lead us to want to hear more, depending on how they answer it in the first round. Yeah. The big, is four the big one. anything in, in that one as Sorry. well? I know it's something from a strategic plan perspective for us. That's a good point. Yeah. Put that, it, put table four round for round. the second round, possibly. Four. I mean, because some of those, it's hard to decide whether you want to ask that. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. well. if they covered it, then I don't need to ask. But if they haven't covered it, then you want to ask it. Yeah, I don't want to lose four. Yeah, I like four. So, sometimes you get you get your answer to four by how they answer seven. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because they talk about the importance of, four. of doing that. Mm -hmm. But it, given where we are in terms of the pool that mm -hmm. we're looking at when we're talking about human resources and hiring, uh, four is something to be asked, I think. Um, again, if you don't get the answer from how they answer uh, number seven, right? Okay, wait a sec, I just, we're doing two this and quite seven. quite code, yeah. Two and seven the code in the is first hard. Yeah. The code two is and hard. seven in the first round, Correct. right? Correct. Yep. And for the second round, maybe four and maybe a ten with a, a little borrowed word or two from, from 11. 11. Yes. Correct. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's look at uh, last category. And again, there are 14 possibilities here mm -hmm. um, because in, in this district, in this size district, this is a key. Um, right. Um, just on First glance for me, number five stuck out. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. yeah. Six seems like a horrible question to ask because they might have <laughs> yeah. the majority. The major yeah. the majority of them are going uh, back to that it. job. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's the best place great. ever. Yeah. Awesome. You know awesome. that, is, that is borrowed from a list of top ten interview questions. Hmm. When I that look aren't at done that in a public in, forum? In this setting, it may not be so good. <laughs> I've been asked that in a, in a you know, mm -hmm. private sector interview in a we room where that's not that. being filmed. We might review that from the bank of potential questions. Yeah. I think seven because that piece we've done so much work on. Mm -hmm. um, yes. In the past couple mm -hmm. years, that and um, that's something that our le that we would I think we would all expect our leader to absolutely one hundred to be engaged mm -hmm. with. I like nine, but not necessarily for first round, just because given our pool of candidates. Um, I like I I, I, really? I sort of like it for the first okay. round because again it's all about presenting the vision of the future. How, did, how have they done what they've done in the past? How are they going to do what they're going to do in the future? And that sort of ties both those elements together. Mm -hmm. One, one I heard about, definitely for oh. the first round so far is seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard favorable things about five, favorable things about nine, but no real 
excitement yet. How about 11? I like that. Yeah. It's more of a character question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Might be a good first round is what I was thinking. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I liked eight. Let's go back. Eight. 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 Generic. Mm. For a first round? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that, it. Yeah. yeah I like eight. Round. I mean, that's, that's a big role of right. a person that, if they, do yeah. they understand the importance of that role and how do they communicate it? So sure. I think you, I think that's a good question because you could learn a lot from a person by the way they answer that. Mm -hmm. So I've got seven, eight, and 11 for the first round. Okay. And five. Wait, and five. One. Did we say five? Oh yeah. Five was when I was five. Mm -hmm. There just wasn't a lot of agreement when I said five. I liked it. I like it as well. Yeah. So it's fine. Got, it doesn't make me sad. I've got five, seven, eight, and eleven. Anything there that you say we got to make sure we address this in the second round? If we get serious about somebody, we got to know how they do this. I, nine. I would say nine for sure. Because yeah, that's I agree. when they're getting real close to having to do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when it comes to the closing, I usually suggest um, yeah, the, the second option for the closing is the one we use in the first round. Okay. Because um, frankly, oh, don't, don't really care about what questions they might have if they're not going to be back with us. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of that is how would we go about answering? Because you have seven individuals, none of us that speak for the entire board. Mm -hmm. So that's a difficult question. A, a difficult yeah. thing to ask, whereas the other one is, hey, we asked you 15 questions. Do you have any closing things you'd like to leave? Yeah. Yes. What else, what else lies in the universe? Bergen, you had a, you I, wanted I to, go, her. to go back? It was just yeah, I didn't, I was unclear on which was which well, on that, for leadership questions. Just it just kind of flew through. I didn't get any input. I think I got and, it, right. and then it was done. done. Before, yeah. before can, I take this back. home yeah. to right. process okay. it, I'm going back to page one and okay. just saying. Okay. But I appreciate that. For the first go category. Them. Just given today, I feel like we didn't get a lot on two and three in leadership. It doesn't need to be those questions, but. Let me go back. Um, the, I really like to. The concept of two and three we could formulate it differently but it's are you feeling that for first or second round second okay yeah i would agree with that and yeah. you know for, for me two is about local when you've had to be the point person and three is more about engagement uh professionally and often county and statewide it's a, it's a they're they're somewhat different but they're both important to know and yet it would be interesting to hear their interpretation on two with mm -hmm. their answer that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would also be interesting to see their interpretation of three mm -hmm. because True. some, some True. people may think that's a big part of their job and other people may True. say, well, why would I be involved in that? Right. Mm -hmm. so for second round? Is mm -hmm. that what we're talking about? So yeah. Yeah. two and yeah. three I've got noted for second round. Thank yeah. you. Correct. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Now, do you want to go back okay. and go from page one and no. go all the way through it again? Just the first category. Okay. I have us choosing question three for the first round, yes. mm -hmm. question one for the second round. Correct. Correct. Okay. Second okay. category, I've got us choosing three, five, and eight for the first round, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and two for the second round. That's what right. I have as well. Okay. <laughs> I like that. So far, we're aligned. Yes. For the third category, I've got two, six, for the mm -hmm. first round, and four and eight for the second round. Correct. Correct. Okay. For the fourth category, oh, this is why I do this. Um, <laughs> I've got five, eight, and ten for mm -hmm. the first round. Yes. Yep. And nine for the second round. Yes. Correct. Okay. For category five, I've got two, seven, 
for the first round, four and ten for the second round. We're borrowing, trying to pull in the from fourth 11. word mm -hmm. from eleven. Correct. Right. That fourth word from yes. eleven. Yes. Okay. And then for the last category, I've got five, seven, and eight, and eleven. Yes. yes. And then for the second round, possibly two, three, and nine. Yes. Correct. Okay. That's. <laughs> I, I'm I, I'm amazed we were a hundred percent aligned. But I know. We were. There was a lot of numbers. There, there was a lot. Of, I know. I, yes. Well, <laughs> no, he's on top my, of his game over there. Yeah. My little <laughs> hiccup was I didn't make. I, I try and use consistent notations for myself on that one mm -hmm. category where I had it. But we're okay. You did good. I used the square and the round method. Me too. So I, the square I, I was round star. two. And the circle was round that's, one. That's exactly what I did, Scott. No joke. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. I did, star and circle. I did star the and circle. circle and first, and then no and circle and too. second. Oh my gosh. I have a couple lines. Too. Oh my goodness, how funny. So we're ready to move on now to talk about the people to whom such questions will be addressed. Correct. Can we take like three minutes? Yes, of course. Yep. Oh, yeah, just, absolutely. Can we have a three minute break? Does yep. anyone mind? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Three minute break. <laughs> so we're now at the point where we're going to try and figure out if we can come to a consensus around the group of candidates we want to invite for interviews. This is different than you did it previously. Um, MLI's practice is to bring you binders with all the information about candidates to go through them that night and then have you decide. Um, 
plus of theirs is they have a legal interpretation saying you do that in closed session. Downside of theirs is really the first time you see the material is literally the night you're making decisions. Um, our process is different. Uh, we give you access to all the materials ahead of time. Um, I got some questions from some of you, so I want to just flesh out based upon the questions I got a little bit more information about some of the candidates because those questions came to me. Um, let me just go down the list and say candidate 21, uh, I had a question about can you help us better understand what that role is. That title appears to be a title that is not at a very high level in our organization. Um, in the district this person is from, that person is a member of the cabinet. Um, they are the person who is in charge of all teaching, learning, assessment in that district, technology, state and federal programs. They do the administrative team agendas. They do the professional development for administrators. They do not evaluate principals. Um, that is assigned to somebody else who is a member of the cabinet. So again, different districts have things organized differently. But that's a little bit more background on candidate 21. Um, candidate 55, let me just double check. Um, candidate 55, it is a much smaller district. Uh, enrollment is about one-fifth of your enrollment. Uh, principals report to the superintendent is who evaluates all the principals is the superintendent. Um, candidate 55 is new to that role. Um, there is no direct supervision or evaluation of principals in the role uh, that that candidate held previously. And in terms of a cabinet in a district that size, the cabinet is basically the administrative, the principals in the district kind of function. And they all basically take different roles. Um, again, having worked in the district that size, the pluses, uh, you know everything from buses to food service to accounting to human resources because there's nobody else doing it. Um, so that's, that's a little more background on that candidate. I had a question about candidate 65. Again, um, evaluates all the directors, early childhood, information technology, school improvement, grants, instructional coaches, and is a partner in principal evaluations, though they do not sign them. There's another person who signs the principal evaluations, but in terms of developing goals, having check-ins, doing visits with principals, coaching them, and even developing IDPs where necessary. Um, <coughs> candidate 65 does all that, um, but just organizationally, it's another member of the cabinet who is actually signing off and has final say on evaluations. Um, uh, let's see, through um, some questions about candidate 14, just trying to figure out on their resume, they had some history over on the bus side of the state. Um, that candidate's role previous um, basically was with a private school of which there were five constituent schools. Total enrollment between the five schools was about 2,400 students also collaborated with public school districts in that same region. So there was a, a component, there's some public districts listed on their resume, and that was kind of a collaboration and support as they worked together on some elements of curriculum development. And then I had somebody ask, um, if you dug into the weeds and read all the application questions, candidate 103 had an answer on a couple of questions that was a head scratcher. That is a common way that, that those questions are misread. The information, there's nothing alarming. Um, but there's a, a misread that can happen on how the question is phrased. So it's just a misunderstanding. It, it yes. was, it's a misread. <laughs> um, and just, just so you know, once you get candidates, and I have a list coming out tonight, in addition to contacting them, making sure they accept the interview, getting them scheduled. And just so you know how I schedule candidates to interview is when I talk to candidates tonight, I tell them tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. you will get an email. The email will have a link to Sign Up Genius. 
pick your slot. Um, I do that to avoid any appearance of bias in how they're scheduled. Um, they schedule themselves. Because, and I've, I've had people tell me, this slot's the best slot. This slot's the best slot. I don't know if there's anything to that, but to avoid any appearance of bias, I just, I tell them all, look for an email at 9 a.m. And it's, they all get blind copied on the same email, so I know that they're all getting the same opportunity to schedule themselves. So that's how that works. The other thing that will happen um, once I have the names from you, the numbers from you, and I go match them to the names and they say yes to interview, is MASB also use a con uses a contract service, a third party service, to do another layer of background checking. Um, and so, you know, before they come to interview with you, there will be that additional layer of, of digging. Um, and I'll also say that because we're picking candidates tonight, we'll have them publicly announced tomorrow. Um, It'll be like three weeks before we interview them. It is uh, open source vetting. <laughs> um, uh, people see the names. People dig uh, the, in a way that is, uh, I do pretty good, but I'm amazed sometimes. Um, my request is, should any of that, any information that is of concern surface, please direct that information to me, contact me, and I will dig it down. Typically, it's a call to the candidate saying, you know, this is what board member X has heard, um, a member of the community where you, you know, contacted, help me understand this, help me put context on it. So that, that's just some of what's ahead. Um, what are your, any general thoughts on the pool of candidates, any, any uh, questions that I can try and answer for you before I ask you to tell me I, I will basically pull the board, and I've already warned Danielle, one yep. of the beauties of being president is I will start with her. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I and ask her to come with down up, the line. Up, up to five. Um, right. And then, then we see, but before I do that, is there any just in general that you had questions about or thoughts about you thought would be good for, to share with each other? Any questions or thoughts before we just share our initial, right, um, candidate selections, I guess. Uh, and, and basically what I'll do is I'll pull the whole board. Sometimes when I do that, you've all coalesced, and there's a very clear line of, of here's the core that we should bring back to interview. Uh, sometimes there's, you know, two people who say this. Sometimes there's outliers, and then we have more conversation about, um, yes, we should really bring that. Sometimes people say, yeah, I was the only one who voted, and that was just a reach. So... <laughs> Right. So, ready to just poll, poll each, so I do the poll. Okay, let's do the poll. So like you said, I get to uh, go first. I had um, four candidates, um, so number 30. Okay. Okay. Number three. Number 65. And number 21. I also had four. Um, 30, okay. 65, 85, and 21. Okay. You know what? I, I'm just going to skip and we'll go right if you're ready, Susan. Sure. I had. I had five, okay. and it's all of the same that they said. So 21, 85, 3, 65, and 30. Okay. And very good. <laughs> Don't forget your mic. <laughs> I selected 21. I selected uh, 65. I selected 30. 
and I selected 85. Those are my four. Okay. And Scott? 30. Okay. 3. 65. And 21. And Jake? I selected, I had three that stood out. Uh, 30. Three and sixty-five. Okay, so let me just for my own. Same. <laughs> so there's so thirty and. 60. And that was my number four. So Five. that's I'm fine with twenty-one. Okay. 60. Um, so four, you, had you also had 21, Jake? 21 would have been my fourth. Okay. So the, the ones that he highlighted is darn well near unanimous. It, I, that would have been my fourth, fourth if I was forced to select a fourth. So the, the question I have is um, I say four to six to interview. Um, 85 and three both have support. You know, if we do it strictly in order, Three would be the next, and then 85. Um, I, I do encourage us to get at least to a fourth, because, again, there is, uh, I talk to all the candidates. They tell me, yes, yes, they're in, they're going to, but <laughs> it's, it's never a sure thing once I call them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm actually fine with all five that had any support at all. From my perspective, too, because we're so close between four and five. Uh, to me, well, well, technically twenty-one if Jake would be six, but yeah. Well, tw twenty-one's coming back, right. so those are the top three. Yeah. So the question is, eighty-five. I'm not interested. Eight. I mean, if you got, if we there decide to see eighty-five, but I'm, I'm not interested in seeing eighty-five. I've seen eighty-five before uh, in multiple forums. So I'm just not interested. So my point was a little different. Sorry, I, I'm not, not sure either. I was clear. There were five candidates that got any support, support. from yeah. anybody on the board. Got it. And so to me, five. all five that got any support, we could bring back. Oh, I see what you're saying, Susan. Sorry. Because yes. no, out of okay. all the candidates we had, there are five that got some support right. from someone. So and whether we bring so back four or five, narrow, that's, yeah. so and, instead and of and cutting it, let's just look at all those. We, we can invite all five, and that is not unreasonable. It makes a long first night. Basically, we do six, seven, and eight. We'd be done debriefing by 940. Because <laughs> sometimes, and I'll be honest, sometimes you've all been in positions where you've hired people. And sometimes it's a polite debrief, like it's, okay, we... we Next, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> but, and so, it, I, you know, I'm comfortable with inviting all five. And as you said, they may not all accept your invitation, but I think since we're so close in numbers, as I see it, we have spanning from three to, f six. to six mm -hmm. on all of those five. Uh, we have the two sixes, so all of us agreed on 60, well, it looks like 65 and 30. We were compared 30 and then 20. Yeah, 21. I mean, right. you, could and throw, 21. you could throw me on 21 as well because it's in my top four. If we're going to bring four back or right. five, so then those 21, three candidates, is, 21 we were was my, my fourth. 100% so, unanimous yes. pretty much with, and then that just, like you said, leaves the question of, the other two, and they're so 85 and three. And, I would and just say bring I, them both. I've got no problem with planning for five. Um, I, I can tell you, just given the background and current role of uh, three, I think it would be iffy um, mm -hmm. for him to say yes at this point. Huh. Just there's a big risk for him. Sure. And it makes me sad because I know him and he's great, but yeah. I hope you can convince him. Well, that I, person. That person. <laughs> that that person. My job no. will be to. They they will, they will, 
listen to you, I'm sure. <laughs> that, they listen to me so far. That's why they're that, why you see them. <laughs> but there's also, uh, given given current situation, there's just a. Um, uh, you read his resume. Um, you you probably understand that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We got there, you. Yeah. We, we hear, there's we interesting feel. circumstances that certain candidates face. Certainly. Exactly. Right. Um, it, it's a timing thing. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, that's so is that typically, so like when you see something like where it's like you're going four to six, we already have five, that's typically what districts do then? We don't deliberate at all and decide to go down. No. We, it, like, there, there's, in this that, case, I don't think We don't do that now. There's not a need to. Okay. Um, You'll learn more about them over when the next three weeks and in the interview. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully you'll see all five, and, and that's the point at which. And it's, it's amazing once you talk to them. I typically, once we get to this point, their consensus begins to roll, is what I've, I've discovered. Um, and, you know, you, you talk to each other. Um, yeah. I'm comfortable with setting up for five. Perfect. If, if you all are, because they, they all had. Does everybody well. agree? Does everyone? Is everyone okay? Is okay with setting That's up with all five? Absolutely, I okay. think it's awesome. I yeah. Mean, okay. Perfect. When you think about that, you had six adults looking at 19 people and we could agree on five. Right, that's pretty, pretty cool. impressive yeah. actually. <laughs> and that's really my point of yeah. why let's cut, why cut one out. 100%. Right. Those no, are that's only awesome. five that all got a vote. Right, vote. right, no, on some capacity and that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. it up. Look and it up. I've, I, I'm remiss that we did not thank you, Sean, because you did a great job in organizing this for us and helping point us in the right direction based on the, the process so far. So thank you for that. It really helped. It, well, I, and, yeah. and the goal is, I think I said last time, process is important and moving through and making sure I, and I'll, you know, I will tell you that each step of the way, I will do check-ins with you. I will check in after the first round interviews and say, do we need second round interviews? Are there both in terms of are your mind set, have you coalesced, or um, do I need more candidates because we get out of the first round and you say, yeah, none of these are going to work. So, you know, I always try and make sure that um, we don't lock ourselves in. And we, we, we keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving forward, keep moving right? Keep forward. That's all I you can will, do. Let me just double check. I've got 17th and 18th as interview dates. Master um, calendar. Yes. <laughs> and... Are people comfortable with, um, can, can we start a meeting at what time? Uh, Everyone and synchronize the calendars yes. on those two days. <laughs> like everybody synchronize. The set, July 17th and July 18th. We set, we set the calendar. Hopefully everybody blocked off those evenings. Yes. Julie blocked them yeah. for us. The Julie. evenings are, but the question was if we could start earlier, right? Right. Yeah. Just what the time? The 18th I would prefer earlier. We have people coming from out of town, but I pretty much told them, So, Guess Sean, what? are you thinking they want to get there? The 17th would be 3 2. I so, think, I was thinking we'd do 3 on the 17th, 2 on the 18th. Okay. So, or just because we would have a, I mean, we could start earlier on both those nights. I'm just, you know, obviously. Um, I can. I'm free after 4. I'm available on so most days. So. On, on, my, on my Julie holds, I also have the 16th. So, does it, are we just saying it's the 17th and 18th? 18th. Is that what? Yep. Because I didn't get that, Julie. Holt. Ah. I had, I had. Well, it I was. Had, I believe it was initially because we initially had the seventeenth as our regular board meeting. Right. We so did. we held the sixteenth and the eighteenth, but we've since moved. Okay. Our and I know I remember in the in a previous meeting you said you prefer not to have a gap of a time between like those day, two nights. Yeah. So yeah. that explains the Wednesday. But right. I just was saying we could either go Wednesday, and Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, that I understand. My that's my one. Doesn't only Sean's available that, on Tuesday. And, and, and that's fine. I mean, I, I am now teaching superintendent evaluation Ooh. on Tuesday. Okay. So the 17th and 18th. So what time would people just, if you want to say I'm available after four or we'll whatever. start at five. On the five. 17th. And the 18th. I can do five. I on can both days. also do five. I yes. can, it sounds like everybody can do five okay. on both days. Did Susan say she could? Did you I say know. that? I'm sorry. I mean, those days are bad for me no matter what. Yeah, I know. But. It's okay. I'm going to make it work. Okay. So, but this earlier, five o'clock, she, she go earlier. <laughs> I, I've, I've got this. I'm just 
I want to make sure I offer interview slots at 5, 6, and 7 on the 17th. Okay. And at 5, five and, and 6 on the 18th. I like it. I'll, and then that will give us time on the 18th, obviously, for deliberations. To and deliberations and get you home by. Okay. Sometime. A reasonable time. The, the, the other thing I want to recommend is that the meeting start time, if people can do this, be posted as 4.55. <laughs> each of those uh -huh. nights so that call the the interview order, takes so they're sledge. ready to go at five. Mm -hmm. So that Got first it. interview is, is at five. five. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. Makes perfect yeah, sense. Yeah, they get their full. Now, when you talked about the debrief, so they go for 50 minutes. Do we hold all of that in our comments until after all the interviews for the night are done, we don't debrief. We don't debrief in the ten minutes. Okay. Okay. We, that's just that's just get we, a drink of water, get, get ready for the next water. person. Yep. What, what usually okay. can happen in that ten minutes is I can get the papers collected, hand them off. They can get copied. After the second interview, we can distribute the feedback from the first interview. Okay. After the third interview, we can distribute the feedback from the second interview. So that, you know. Then a little sure pause after the third to get the feedback on the third, third and then we're ready to go. Give you a chance to read it all, and then we debrief all three. So you had said earlier in the meeting that you were going to ask us after every interview, so what did you think? Uh, I, and I think that's maybe the yeah, interpretation of. Let me, that's what I wanted <laughs> yeah. to clarify. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Each night we'll debrief the interviews from that night. At the okay. end, after, after the last the candidate has interviewed, candidate oh, got it. Okay. Debrief, not deliberate. Right. Difference. Debrief. We'll, we'll say the first night. We'll simply say, "What did you like? What are your questions?" And we'll stop it there. Second night, we'll see the last two. I'll say, "What did you like? What are your questions?" After we do that, then I typically say, "In general, do people have comments about the five candidates you've seen?" And that's when, that's the invitation for somebody to say, you know, I really liked mm -hmm. Mr. Jones and Ms. Smith. Mm -hmm. um, and I encourage people to have conversation. Um, I know sometimes the process is to move you right to emotion, but I encourage people to have the conversation to share perspectives on what you've seen and then see if that conversation moves you towards a motion. Does that? Mm -hmm. I, it's probably not 100% Robert's rules, um, but I, I kind of fold it under interview debriefing to have that time to talk about them and hear people's impressions. Because sometimes people hear things and see things, and when it's brought to your attention, you go, oh, yeah, that really was good. I didn't hear it that way, and now that you point it out, I need, yeah, it, it changes one's perception of candidates sometimes. So I, I, I try and have boards do that before moving to a motion to say, um, you know, let's make a motion to bring back Mr. Smith and Ms. Jones. Right. Perfect. Um, any other questions as far as moving forward, the process? Um, Anything else at this point? Oh, you got to switch out his mic. <laughs> um, okay. And thank you again, Sean. I know you take a lot of phone calls, I'm sure, from us. So I appreciate you being so available and willing to, you know, take the time to talk with us. And, and, and let me say again, it's a little unusual we have this large of a gap between names being out in the first mm -hmm. round interview, which could mean it's more likely you get more community input, which is good. You know, but again, if something comes to you <laughs> that is, you know, alarming, please, please contact me because, you know, part of my job is to chase that down for you. Um, again, I don't think it will, uh, but again, I, I'm not on every social media platform, and I guarantee you that you will have people looking at these names who are on every social media platform. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> Correct. Yes, that is correct. I'm sure. Okay. Any any other questions or comments before we move to our action item? Okay. Looks like we are ready to uh, 
make the motion. So may I please have a motion for the selection of candidates for first round interviews? I move to approve the following applicants to be invited for first round interviews for the superintendent position. Number 21, number 85, number three, number 65, and number six. No. 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 Number 30. Oh, 30. How did I get six? I'm sorry. I was almost so right. Six was the number, maybe at the end. Oh, you're, yeah, you're oh, yeah, yeah. the line number, maybe. So I'll reread those. Yeah, so I was going to say, if you could just reread that one more time. <laughs> Numbers 21, 85, 3, 65, and 30. Thank yes. you, Scott. Is there support? Support. Thank you, Susan. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. So we will uh, have those individuals... Uh, hopefully with us in a couple of weeks. So obviously as far as recap next step goes, Sean will work on contacting everybody tonight. Is that your goal is to contact them this evening to let them know? Um, hopefully I will contact them and have a be, my goal be to be done with this by 9 p.m. I love it. And then as you already mentioned, the sign up genius, um, We'll go out tomorrow at some point to so they can schedule their own times. And then Mark is going to take care of all the communications tonight once he gets the go ahead from Sean of, uh, or tomorrow, I'm sorry, tomorrow once. Um, sh yep. Okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you. So, but one, Sean, will you let us know if everybody, if anybody says no or, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Or let Danielle know. Yep. 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 If you could just let me know and then I can um, send out quick texts or. Um, whatnot that would be helpful just so we're all on the same page of who will be joining us um did i miss anything recap next steps julie did i miss anything uh, i'll just clean up those calendar dates cancel the 16th and the okay times for you. okay perfect okay just one quick question yeah, yeah i'm ahead. hoping that we have both nights needed but if one night is only needed, are we sticking with the 17th or 18th? Is there a preference amongst the board? One night better? Oh, that's a, good that's a good point. If for some reason some two candidates decide not to move forward with the interview. It would be best on Wednesday because that's good. That's usually our. But, Susan, whatever you need because, like. That's okay. Thursday would be best for me. If that's fine with just me. Three. I'd be fine with Thursday. Okay. But that's, that's... also bad for Jake because oh. that's his. Well, no, that's, that's, that's fine. Okay. They, if we only have three candidates, right. then... Are you okay with Thursday? Yeah, if okay. we, it if, would be five... Six, it would I'm be hoping we need both five, nights. Five, six, and seven. But if yeah. for some reason we did not, yeah. the preference the, would be Thursday. Even with three, just because it's long, I might recommend two, one, and deliberate, mm. just mm. to okay. make it more manageable. Three, three in a night's doable, but... The addition of the deliberation and discussion. Mm -hmm. And just, sorry, one more point of clarification. If one of the candidates does decide to drop, we would do two and two then, two Wednesday night, two Thursday mm -hmm. night, and that would make the most sense for us. Okay, yeah. perfect. Because okay. you'll know that before you put the time slots out. Correct. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm fine with that, Sean. If that's your professional recommendation, two and one, I'm and fine. I'll just, make that work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any other recap next steps, anyone? Okay. Um. The, the other thing on the calendar is oh. we do have two dates reserved for second round interviews, mm -hmm. the 30th and 31st. Mm -hmm. um, again, looking ahead to there, I would anticipate two candidates coming back and us only needing one of those. Okay. So we can talk about that in three weeks. But just, you know, as you're looking at your calendars, Got it. Uh, if there's a preference now of which would be better, um, we, we can look at that if, it, if it's helpful. Okay. That might depend on the candidate availability too, right? If, especially if That's they're committing after yeah. the tours and open yeah. houses and all that. And things of that. Well, yeah, I, I suppose that's something once we... Once whittle it down. Maybe we can cross that bridge depending we upon. Can cross that bridge. I, yeah. I right. can also tell you I'm, I'm somebody who says, you want the job? This yeah. is. There's, <laughs> there's an aspect to that. That's yeah. Right. There's Absolutely. an aspect to that. that right. Um, we can 
you know, well, once we, we, can look at we can look at it once, but just keep it on your radar that okay. after the first round, if we're only going to. The gonna... good news is we're not talking about doing that to over two days. We'll right. Be down it's to just two, to what, we, right. Our goal so, is to get down to two correct. people and do them in the same day. Correct. Okay. Perfect. Um, all right. So that brings us to closing comments. Jake, anything? No. Scott? I'm all set. Very good. good. <laughs> awesome. Susan? Awesome. Heather? Thank you, Sean. That's it. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for the awesome discussion. And um, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you.